One of the most common questions I get from patients is this. Doctor, I had my lipid profile report, but I have no idea what these numbers mean. Should I be worried? And I completely understand these reports uh, can feel like trying to decode a foreign language. You see numbers like uh, HDL, LDL, triglycerides, total cholesterol, but what do they actually mean for your heart health? Namaste. Welcome back to Edgy Cardio Wise. I am Dr. Amonkar and today we'll break it down step by step so you will understand exactly what these numbers mean. By the end of this video, you will know what each number in the lipid profile represents, whether your numbers are in the safe zone or it's time to take action. What are cholesterol ratios and why they matter? Why it is not just about the numbers but your overall risk and what is more important whether it is LDL or HDL. So let's get started. Now, a uh, lipid profile is like a health report card for your blood fats. It measures the type and amounts of fat circulating in your blood, uh, giving you and your doctor clues about your heart health. Now, uh, here's what a typical lipid profile includes. First is total cholesterol. That's uh, the overall amount of uh, cholesterol in your blood. Second, LDL or low density lipoprotein, uh, which we call as bad cholesterol that can clog your arteries. Third is HDL or high density lipoprotein. Now, uh, this is the good cholesterol that clears excess cholesterol from your bloodstream. Fourth is triglycerides. Now, it's a type of fat that the body uses for energy but can become risky in excess. Now, high levels of triglycerides are linked to overeating, excess uh, sugar or alcohol consumption. Now, fifth is VLDL or very low density lipoprotein. But uh, don't uh, let the name confuse you. Its job is a bit different from LDL and uh, HDL. Now, imagine uh, VLDL as a delivery truck loaded with triglycerides. Now, the liver packs them up and sends them out to fuel your muscles and tissues. We usually don't fuss over it because it is closely linked and rather it is estimated from triglycerides, uh, which are already measured in a standard lipid profile. The next one is non-HDL cholesterol. Now, non-HDL cholesterol includes all the bad cholesterol types, not just LDL, but also the other harmful lipoproteins. Now, it's considered a more comprehensive risk marker for heart disease than LDL alone, but still LDL is what is more commonly used. Now, let's decode these numbers. To make things simple, I will divide them into three zones. The green zone, which represents the ideal values. The orange zone, which uh, represents borderline high values, but not yet in the danger zone. And finally, the red zone, which represents the danger zone. But please remember, values in the danger zone doesn't mean you are going to have a heart attack tomorrow. It only means you will need to take action and uh, this will require medications. We will also discuss the other rules of interpretation later in the video. Also, in India, we measure the cholesterol values in milligram per deciliter, also called as uh, milligram percent. In some countries, uh, values are represented in millimore per, uh, per liter and can be converted into milligram per deciliter uh, using a simple online conversion tool. Okay, so let's start with the numbers. Uh, first is total cholesterol. Now, the green zone here is less than 200 milligram percent. Second, orange zone is between 200 to 239 milligram percent and uh, the red zone would be above 240 milligram per cent. Next is LDL uh, that is low density lipoprotein or bad cholesterol. The green zone here is less than 100 milligram per cent. The orange zone is between 100 to 159 milligram per cent and the red zone above 160 milligram per cent. Next is HDL or uh, high density lipoprotein that is the good cholesterol. So no zones here. Ideally, above 40 milligram percent for men and above 50 milligram percent for women. The higher is always better. Next comes triglycerides. The green zone here is less than 150 milligram percent. The orange zone is between 150 to 500 milligram uh, percent, and the red zone is above 500 milligram. Percent. Next is non-HDL cholesterol. To calculate the zones here, just add 30 to our LDL zones. As I said before, we will stick to LDL as our primary parameter. Another important point uh, that I need to mention here is that the values we have discussed is for primary prevention, that is for anyone who wants to prevent heart disease. These are not for someone who has already had a heart attack, a stroke, an angioplasty or a bypass in the past, and as these individuals will require further lowering of their LDL values for preventing a second event or a procedure. Now let's talk about cholesterol ratios. Before that, let's think about uh, ratios in real life. Remember school math, we learned that ratios compare two things. It's, it's like the ratios of say boys to girls in a class. In finance, 
uh, the stock market uses the PE or the price to equity ratio to compare a company's price to its earnings. Sachin Tendulkar has an ODI strike rate of 86.3. That means he scored 86 runs in 100 balls. That's a ratio again. So ratios help to provide a much broader information. The same logic applies to cholesterol ratios. They help to understand not just how much bad or good cholesterol you have, but how it is balanced. So first is the total cholesterol to HDL ratio. Now, this is the most widely used cholesterol ratio. It compares your total cholesterol to your HDL, that is uh, the high density lipoprotein or good cholesterol. A lower ratio indicates a healthier balance of cholesterol, meaning uh, there is more HDL or good cholesterol to help clear the excess LDL from your bloodstream. A higher ratio, on the other hand, suggests a greater risk for heart disease. So less than 3.5 is the green zone here, uh, between 3.5 and 5 is the orange zone, and above 5 is the red zone. Next is the LDL to HDL ratio. Now this ratio directly compares the bad cholesterol that is LDL to the good cholesterol that is HDL. A lower LDL to HDL ratio is ideal because it suggests that your HDL levels are high enough to combat the buildup of LDL in your arteries. A higher ratio means there is more LDL than HDL increasing your risk for plaque formation. So less than 2.5 is the green zone between 2.5 to 3.5 is the orange zone and above 3.5 is the red zone. Now there are other ratios also like the non-HDL to HDL ratio or the triglyceride to HDL ratio but they are less commonly reported and used. So ratios provide a more holistic assessment of your cardiovascular risk. By balancing the numbers, they provide a more contextual insight. For instance, uh, even if your LDL is slightly high, a high LDL might neutralize its impact resulting in a favorable ratio. They help counter individual variations. Uh, some people have naturally high total cholesterol or triglycerides, but the ratios remain optimal due to high HDL level. So are your cholesterol numbers the whole story? Not quite. These numbers are a part of the picture. Your overall risk for heart disease depends on a combination of factors. Uh, first is age and gender. Now, as we age, our LDL values tend to rise and women often see changes after menopause. Second is genetics. If heart disease runs in your family, you may have inherited conditions like uh, familial hypercholesterolemia, which causes high LDL levels. Third is lifestyle. Uh, smoking, poor diet and lack of exercise all negatively affect your cholesterol uh, profile. Fourth is uh, other conditions like uh, diabetes, high blood pressure and inflammation, which can amplify your risk. So think of cholesterol numbers like pieces of a puzzle. Uh, to truly assess your heart health, you need to look at the whole picture, your numbers plus your risk factors. As a cardiologist, when I look at the lipid profile, I don't just see numbers. I assess your risk for heart disease and stroke. Now, one tool I often use is the ASCVD risk calculator. Now it takes into account your cholesterol values, that's your HDL, LDL and total cholesterol. Second is your age and gender. Third is blood pressure. Fourth is your smoking status. And fifth is conditions like diabetes. Now this risk score predicts your chance of having a heart attack or a stroke in the next 10 years. For example, a young active person with a higher LDL might have a lower risk than someone with a lower value but with diabetes and a family history of heart disease. So it's not just about the values, but your overall risk assessment. Decoding your lipid profile is the first step, but what you do next is just as important. So work with your doctor to understand how your numbers fit into your overall risk, whether you need any additional tests like a CRP uh, or an LPA, and finally your personalized plan for keeping your heart healthy. Remember, it's not just about lowering your cholesterol, it's about achieving balance and protecting your heart. Now, some patients often ask me why their HDL that is good cholesterol uh, values are lower despite their LDL that is bad cholesterol values being in the healthy zone and whether they should really worry about it. This brings us to the next question and that is what is more important LDL or HDL and what numbers do you chase? See, lowering LDL is the primary goal in most cases because LDL is the main driver of plaque buildup that is atherosclerosis. Now, high LDL levels are directly linked to increased cardiovascular risk and there is ample evidence that lowering LDL by 40 mg per cent will reduce the risk of a heart attack or a stroke by 20 to 25 percent. Impressive, isn't it? 
secondly there are clear targets for ldl reduction now guidelines recommend specific ldl goals particularly for people with known heart disease diabetes or high risk for high risk individuals like ones who have had a heart attack or an angioplasty the goal is to lower ldl to at least less than 70 mg per cent and for those with recurrent events the targets are even more stringent thirdly lifestyle changes and medications effectively lower ldl values now statins and other medications have proven benefits in lowering ldl and reducing heart attack and stroke fourth while higher hdl levels help offset the damage caused by ldl and uh, they improve the balance of cholesterol raising hdl isn't just as straightforward because low hdl is often a part of a bigger problem it's commonly linked to high triglycerides insulin resistance or what we call as metabolic syndrome and while exercise weight loss quitting smoking and a healthy diet can raise hdl modestly but there are no medications specifically targeting hdl with proven cardiovascular benefits so the bottom line look at the bigger picture it's not an either or situation what truly matters is the balance between total cholesterol ldl and hdl so if you have slightly elevated ldl but high hdl your cardiovascular risk may still be low on the other hand if your hdl is high but your ldl is extremely elevated the protective effect of hdl might not be enough so what should you focus on so if your ldl is high focus on lowering ldl as it is the primary target in most treatment guidelines now if your hdl is low but ldl is normal focus on lifestyle changes to raise hdl while maintaining a healthy ldl value now if both ldl is high and hdl is low your priority should be lowering ldl through lifestyle changes with or without medications as uh, the need may be don't worry too much about the hdl values as long as your ldl targets are reached your lipid profile is like a window into your heart health understanding these numbers empowers you to take informed decisions about your lifestyle and if needed medical treatments remember the goal isn't just to pass the test it's to protect your heart and live a longer healthier life so if your lipid profile has you puzzled or worried talk to your doctor together you can chart a path to better health and as always prevention is better than cure so take those first steps towards a heart healthy lifestyle today if you got any questions about your lipid profile drop them into the comments below and i'll be happy to help share this video with your loved ones and subscribe to edge cardio wise for more practical life saving tips let's take care of our hearts together stay tuned for our next video where we will discuss practical tips on cholesterol testing like when to start testing how often to test testing in children and much more goodbye